Hello YouTube, Sidekick here in my trusty A10A with another video about getting the most out of the OG HOG in DCS. I will note uh, that I am using the latest version of DCS, which means that I have the updated texture models both inside and out of the aircraft, and they are definitely an improvement, but they also mean something else very important, at least to me. I think that the fact that uh, Eagle Dynamics took the time put these uh, together, I uh, mean, is an indication that the A-10A and some of the other uh, FC-3 aircraft are getting some attention, probably as an entry-level plane in DCS, and I think that this is a good thing, uh, partly because I really do like the aircraft. And, in fact, given the interest in the A-10A, I'm planning to do a bit of a project to fly it in uh, a multiplayer environment, in hopefully what I hope is going to be a recreation of something like the battlefield it was expected to fight on when it was designed, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as we're on the way out to the range, but let's talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. Today's video is about being deadly with dumb bombs. It's not surprisingly for this channel, but I mean really, really deadly with them, and by that I mean dive bombing, and I mean really dive bombing. Uh, if you want to get bombs, like truly, in the pickle barrel, uh, even with a CCIP pipper, you really do want to use a high, and I mean very high, dive angle. And by that I mean at least 45 degrees and more if you can. This is because, as we've talked about before, but it's really true, that the, the steeper you dive, the slower your pipper will move across the ground as you're trying to line it up on the target and the more accurate your pickle will be. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about that after we get taken off here. Just doing some final checks to make sure everything is good. Try and aim for a nice smooth takeoff uh, in the A model. Don't want to yank it off the ground too quickly. Uh, it's not notorious for gaining a lot of speed uh, in a hurry, so let's just make sure we're raising the gear just after we get her off the ground and that we get some uh, positive rate of climb before we raise those 10 degrees of flap we put on. And here it comes, just about to rotation now, when that X little cross lifts up, it's ready to come off the ground, hold her there, get the gear up, get the flight path vector rising, that means we can get the flaps up. And then once we get to about 180 knots, a little bit more than that, we're going to pull it up and start heading out to the range. Okay, let's go back to talking about dive angle and its effect on, let's call it, pipper speed across the ground. So the slower your pipper moves, the more accurate your pickle is. So, I'm not going to go through the math, you don't have to trust me on this, but the dive angles where you gain the most from diving more steeply, meaning the more your pipper slows down per degree of dive angle increase, is right around 45 degrees. In other words, the improvement, the slowing down of the pipper from 40 degrees to 50 degrees in dive angle is much larger than the improvement you would get from going, say, 30 to 40. Again, you're going to have to trust me. It's all about trigonometry and the sine curve, if you remember your high school math, but it is true. So, this is not all that different than doing lower angle bombing in principle but it is going to feel different uh, in some important ways. First of all, things are going to happen, well, a lot more quickly. Uh, so you really do have to get good at your roll-in and your roll-out because you won't have much time to fix mistakes if you mess it up when you're doing it at a higher dive angle. So practice a bit at the lower dive angles until you get good, and then try and take it up a notch. Uh, second of all, you are probably going to want to use your speed brakes, uh, which I haven't advocated using at lower dive angles. They're not really necessary, and really they just slow you down. Uh, but if you are diving steeply, um, you really want to slow things down a little bit, and you also want to keep the uh, dive speed from creeping up too high, because it will make it hard to pull out, and you do need to pull out. So, why would you want to use a higher dive angle? I mean, with a CCIP pipper, uh, it's not as important as it used to be uh, in order to hit things really accurately. I mean, the original dive bombers, like the Stuka and the Dauntless, were designed to be very accurate, but only because they dove at angles between 80 and 90 degrees. I mean, they really did dive straight down at their target, and that was why they could be accurate. 
Uh, you don't need to do that uh, with a CCIP pipper, but mm. the fact of the matter is that even a 500 pound bomb is just not that effective against some targets like tanks or some armored vehicles uh, or against a really hard target, yes, which are bunkers. Now, people will argue about whether or not the splash uh, damage model is right and and I know that that is, uh, I, I agree with a lot of that, but the fact of the matter is, in DCS, even with enhanced splash models, it takes a pretty accurate drop to top a tank or to bust a bunker. In both cases, you really need to get within about 10 meters of the target for it to have a chance of having much of an effect. And 10 meters accuracy really no joke, even with CCIP. It's going to take some work to get that, or at least it does for me, so let's go out and see if we can get it done on the range. Let's actually measure the result, see if we can get within 10 meters of the target. Okay, we're coming around the back of the range here. Still got a little bit of time. So let me tell you a little bit about this project that I'm working on and that, that honestly, I can use some help. So uh, if you're interested in doing some multiplayer flying in the A10A, pay, uh, pay attention and um, see if you want to drop by my Discord and get involved. See, in looking around in DCS, I don't see the A-10A eh, getting a whole lot of love out there in the youtube -iverse. Uh I understand why. I mean, the lack of a clickable cockpit and the lack of a high-fidelity sort of systems model really do put off a lot of uh, experienced DCS players, and for good reason. I mean, there's no question that flying the A model is very different than flying the C or the C2. Uh, but, that being said, the A model really is a lot of fun to fly, and it is very accessible to new players who are really focused on, you know, the flying, and haven't really gotten deeper into uh, the deeper parts of the simulation yet. I mean, the other thing that attracts me to the A model is that it really is a Cold War aircraft. It is not a weapons delivery platform, where you need to learn how to interact with three sensors, two displays, a keyboard, and about 17 different HOTAS button presses, um, to hit a target with it. It's Cold War era technology, and there isn't really a lot of that truly going around in DCS yet. And this is what really interests me. Uh, I really haven't seen a lot of missions that simulate, let's say, the battlefield the A-10 was designed for, meaning a Warsaw Pact defensive against Germany, against NATO in Germany, in the 1970s and 80s. Now, it's quite a different environment than sort of the asymmetric battlefields of the Gulf and Iraq and Afghanistan where the A-10 actually did end up seeing action. So I want to have a go at recreating that environment, but to do it justice, um, we're going to have to fly in multiplayer. That's a battlefield. Uh, you know, that battlefield was not an environment where anyone would have flown alone ever. Uh, it's going to take some planning and some coordination to have any hope of recreating the right atmosphere, but I'm going to give it a try. And if you're interested in learning more, as I said, hop on over to my Discord, check out the thread called The Balloon Goes Up, um, and have a look, see if you're interested. Okay, so we're almost uh, ready to start. We're coming around here just on our uh, sort of downwind leg, uh, about to turn base here on the target. Uh, so let's remember the principles of being deadly with dumb bombs as we get ready uh, to line up on the target. Uh, the first of this is you need to plan your approach and you need to get set up where you want to be when you do the roll in. And in this case, we're needing to pay particular attention that we really do want to get very close to the target uh, because we do want a high dive angle. So we're going to pull the target really up close to the sill of the cockpit, and even use this little window here between the, the cockpit dash and the side of the cockpit and try and get the uh, target right in there because we really want to get pretty close. Then when we want to roll in, we want to roll in by putting our lift vector on the target and pulling up. We want to roll out smoothly when we get the flight path vector uh, on or just below the target. And then we want to put the flight path vector just beyond the target. Let it stay there as the pipper comes up to the target. So here we go, rolling in. And we got to get that lift vector. That's just the top of the cockpit over the target. Now we're going to pull up and now we want to be smooth. We got the speed brakes out, by the way. Okay, pretty, it's a good dive angle. Put the lift, the flight path vector just beyond the target, and see the pipper's moving nice and slow, and pickle. That was a pretty good pickle. Uh, and as you can see, the pipper really was moving pretty slowly across the ground. That looks good back there. Now we do have the target impact tracking script running, so we will get an actual numerical 
uh, result here to see how well we did. Okay, so um, there was no indication in the cockpit, but I did have the speed brakes rolled out as soon as I rolled in. Okay, uh, well that's pretty good. Uh, I'll take those numbers. Uh, that's what we were looking for. We're inside the 10 meter mark. The dive angle could have been higher. Speed's not bad. And, the, you know, the drop altitude, we certainly wouldn't want to go a whole lot lower than that. So, not bad for a first try uh, at a high angle diving. Let's go do this again. Uh, this time, though, let's actually try a different target. We're going to go over to the vehicle side of the range. That's on the right-hand side of the range when you're looking at it from the front. Um, and we'll just pick up a target um, where they're individual vehicles and see if we can get accurate enough to actually take out an individual vehicle using our new technique. So we, we are going to want to get even closer to the target. Uh, 43, 40, I think it was 42 and a half degrees. Uh, we need to get even uh, steeper than that, I think, to really get an accurate drop. Um, although I, I still maintain, if you compare that to lower dive angles, you see the pipper really was moving a lot more slowly across the ground. So uh, it was, we did have lots of time uh, to you know, hit the pickle exactly right. And remember, 10 meters on the ground, not a large distance when you're looking at it from this height. Uh, you know, the inner ring of that uh, circular target we just bombed is 25 meters, so we're trying to get within half of that. Uh, it's actually no joke trying to hit something that accurately. Okay, so we're going to take, there's four vehicles down there. They're actually M113 APCs, so they're not all that hard, but they are small. Uh, and it's, uh, you might be able to see them. Show them on the screen there. So we're pulling them in really close to the cockpit here. And we can roll in whenever we really want to, because we don't have to come out the particular direction. That looks good to me. So we're pulling the power back, and we are rolling out the speed brakes to try and give ourselves a nice controlled dive. And we just got to roll out. Don't slide too far past them. And... Back. And now pulling up is a little bit, uh, as you can see, yeah, that was a good steep dive, but the pull-up does take a while. Okay, well, the BDA says that we did all right, so let's see what um, Target Impact Tracking Script has to say about that. That was much more sort of a, the nature of a dive bombing attack, I think. I think we we're up uh, past 50 degrees dive angle. Uh, certainly felt a lot steeper, but it also felt a lot more controlled. Let's take a look at how we did. Okay, well close. We're still, we're not quite within 10 meters, but the dive angle is where we want it. Speed's not bad, not too high, and the, the drop altitude's not bad either, no lower than the last time. So, um, still need to work a little bit. In that case, uh, you know, the accuracy just came from it. wasn't a great roll out. Um, the roll in also was a little, you know, we, we, were, we were struggling a little to get the uh, pipper up to the target there. Um, but, you know, that's why we practice. Uh, and as I uh, continually say, that's why I like practicing on the range, because I can get some numbers and I can really, uh, you know, I can tell just how well I'm doing. And believe me, trying to tell the difference between being 6 meters from a target and being 12 meters from a target, you're not going to do that without a little bit of uh, instrumentation help, I don't think, in DCS. Okay, let's go for a really hard target. Let's go for, there's a bunker down there. Uh, if, you, if you haven't looked at the range before, you'll just have to take my word for it. I know where it is. Uh, although it is very difficult to see. Uh, but honestly, if we're going to take out that bunker, we're really going to have to drop a couple of bombs right on top of it. So, let's see if we can do that. There it is. Got it in the notch of the window there. Coming around on it. Get nice and close to it. Okay, here we go. Final exam, folks. See if we can take out a bunker. Okay. We're getting... <laughs> The altitude does roll off pretty quickly. Okay, not very straight, but we can get the pipper over it. There we go. Pull up, pull up. All right, so, well, that was sort of the ultimate dive bombing experience. <laughs> In terms of uh, having gotten close to the ground before we pulled up. Um, you know, and, and proof that CCIP works. Uh, it wasn't a great roll in or roll out, but we did manage to actually get the bomb on target. And that's not a very big target, uh, honestly. So, let's see what the target impact tracking script had to say to validate that. Well, there you go. Well, I'd say we made our numbers on two out of three passes today.
that's going to do it for me uh, today. Remember, if you do want to do some more flying in the A-10A, drop by my Discord server and look up the thread, The Balloon Goes Up. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon, and this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.